welcome to another edition of The Word on Woodward. I'm your host, Danielle LaBruce, alongside my co-host, Art Regner, and joining us today, the Smith brothers, Giovanni and Jamel. Thank you both so much for taking the time to join us. We are really excited to chat with you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, I'm going to get right into it because yesterday you guys played, or the other day you guys played in your first game on the same line together. And before the game, Jamel, you addressed the media and you said that you guys hadn't even told your parents yet. So I want to know, did one of you end up reaching out to your parents? And what was their reaction to the fact that you guys would be playing together? I'm not going to lie. I forgot. <laughs> Honestly, I just, I, I mean, I just try to take every game like kind of just yeah. normal and like no, like kind of ex too much excitement, just kind of go in kind of even kill so I honestly forgot but I hope they got to watch it yeah no I, I didn't tell them either I was just too focused obviously they know now did they watch did they text you guys yeah I'm pretty yeah. sure they watch uh, obviously I have a lot of cousins and stuff and that obviously keep up with us and obviously my parents do too so I'm pretty sure uh, they definitely watched it I'm kind of curious, as you're growing up or, you know, we hear about, you know, brotherly love or sibling rivalry, what, how would you describe your relationship or has it changed over the years from maybe sibling rivalry to brotherly love or, I mean, what, what, what's it kind of like? Uh, definitely growing up, like, to paint the picture kind of, we, um, we when we were kids, we used to play a lot of, uh, like, knee hockey and uh, street hockey. So we're always like, we always team up against each other to try to like, to win like the cup and trophy. So we've always been like competitive. And then as we started getting older and older, and we started to get closer. But mostly, um, I say competitive kind. Yeah, I mean, it was it was no mercy. Like I have a lot of cousins that play uh, girl and guy cousins. And no matter what age you are, we, we would like run each other right through the wall and stuff like that. So it's just something how we grew up. And that's just how we grew up. And there was no really complaining. Kind of my parents were like, my dad used to always say this one quote, he said like, you'll live. So if you're hurting, kind of just suck it up and just pretty much how we went by. I love it. But I mean, hey, that kind of shaped you guys into the players that you are today, right? And uh, I'm just wondering, you mentioned like the brotherly love, right? And I kind of try to picture myself playing a professional sport alongside my brother. I would probably be really hard on him and he would be really hard on me. So being on the same line, what was that dynamic like? I was obviously uh, it was definitely, <laughs> yeah. it was definitely like I mean, we've already had arguments like yeah. before the game even started. So <laughs> that was a good thing. Um, and we played our first game and just like it's good because I can I can speak my truth, and he can speak his truth to me, and it just makes us uh, better. Well, we got to get used to each other's gameplay, obviously, but I mean, yeah, like we give each other constructive criticism, and I think we both take it pretty well because we know we're uh, being honest with each other, and I think uh, as it goes along, we'll get more comfortable and comfortable, and I think it will work out. I, I know that over the summers that you practice together and you'll work out together, but because you're brothers, I guess there's this assumption that when you get on the ice together and you're on the same line, that you have almost that ability to know what the other one is thinking or where he's going to be. Does that really happen? Yeah, no, for sure it does. I just, like, I know, like, the way I play and the way he plays, like, grew up watching him, like, a lot. So I know, like, what he's normally going to do with the puck, and I'll just go from there. Jamal, I know that from talking to Giovanni over the years, you developed your own kind of workout program each summer that you do. Yeah. I am kind of curious, you're older than him. Did you think, wow, this kid's serious or he's a nut? Or did you join in on this work, workout regimen? Because it's pretty extreme, right, Giovanni? I mean, it's, it, there's a, you take no prisoners in this thing. Yeah, it's, it's actually funny you guys asked that because I mean, everyone always asked me about my brother, like even when I was in Tampa, like what kind of guy is. And I, first thing I said, like he's a hardo, like he, which means like, which is a good thing, which means he like he really, really loves the game. And I feel like sometimes he's, he's a little like extreme with things. He needs to just remember to have fun. But like that just goes with being a younger player. You really, you really want it that bad. But no, I'm, I'm just, I just, I'm just a normal go to the gym workout. I like to, I do I like to do a lot of track, so I do run by myself on the track just because I like running stuff rather than riding bikes. So I wouldn't say I'm as extreme. I just kind of follow the normal routine. And you you are pretty extreme, right, Giovanni? I mean, you've yeah, most most definitely. Uh, growing up, I never had like 
I never had the skill set as like my brother or like people that we play against growing up. And I've always told to like work hard, work hard. So I use that motivation and use my physical attributes to, to get me to where I want to be. And you guys have both described that before the game where you're playing together, you're focused on the game, right? And that's a great thing. But has there been a moment for either of you where you're like, wow, that was really cool. Like I just got to play in an NHL game alongside my brother. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't see it like that as much. I just kind of like more see it like I've been working my whole life to play in this level and so is he. And obviously it's, it is pretty cool to play on a team and like same team and like once I got here and just like, I just kind of just, just, it's just been normal kind of like, I don't really get that more excited than I would for a normal game. It's kind of like, it's more like I kind of expected to be here because that's what I've been training my life and I expect him to be here. So it's just kind of just a normal thing for me, I feel. Yeah, I think uh, to touch on what you said, I'm more, um, We'll focus on like living in the present and then you know as it goes by day by day game by game you know, we're going to start to see things and it seems like oh wow like like you were beside me when we did that or like vice versa my question is is when you were little fellas and you had a cough did you prefer Smith Brothers cough drops? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, no, see, you that's guys, like an old that, man joke. That must be, that must be an American, maybe it's an American cough drop. There was, there were Smith Brothers cough drops. I loved them. I mean, they were great. But, you know, because, you know, when you're a kid, you eat cough drops like they're candy. You don't really. Yeah. No, we just had Buckley's. Yeah. Really? Our family's, yeah. Old, uh, we're it's Jamaican. Canadian thing, though. We're like, we come from a Jamaican background, so we're just the simple kind of like water and, Tylenol or water and Buckley's or, or big like tea family, honey, honey and ginger and like that's it. No, if I can find them, <laughs> don't be surprised. Your locker stalls, if you got, <laughs> each have a box of Smith Brothers cough drops and they're from me. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So I'll frame guys, it. <laughs> did you guys play Super Smash Brothers? As yes. Well? yes. <laughs> okay. So we have been referring yeah. to as the Super Smith Brothers. So that, that one's pretty cool. Yeah, I know you'd be able to relate to that one a little better than whatever cough drops you saw. <laughs> so you never cool. had Smith Brothers? Yeah. The crew, any, anybody ever have Smith Brothers cough drops? Jeez. I don't yeah. think they exist. I think you might have made that yeah. up. <laughs> I think so, too. Maybe you're inventing it right now. Yeah, I guess. Uh, hey, you guys want to want to go into business together? I think you got this idea for a cough drop. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Let's do it. Down. <laughs> Man. <laughs> All right. Well, I do want to touch on a more serious question for the two of you. February is Black History Month, and the NHL and the Red Wings are always celebrating inclusion in the game of hockey and trying to make sure that everybody feels like they can play this game. Do either of you have a piece of advice for a young black hockey player who might feel like maybe this game isn't for me or there aren't very many people that look like me that play this game? I would just say just put your head down and work. Um, there's always going to be some negative things and I and the best way to overcome is just put your head down and work that's how I see it I mean I look up to him oh <laughs> there's, there's a good advice yeah. you know hockey does have that hockey for everyone program mm -hmm. and I know when you fellas and you, you know you you grew up in the Toronto area I understand that hockey is for everyone has there been advancements from when you guys started that it is maybe a better environment for a youngster who may want to get into this game now Oh yeah, definitely for sure. I'm starting to see a lot more uh, uh, colored players playing. Um, in the summer, there's a, a, a skills camp where there's a lot of players just like me, and everyone goes out and they've been running it for uh, a lot of years now. A couple of NHL guys go, Smith, Pelly, Stewart. So I think I'm starting to see a lot more uh, black people are able to, able to see and believe that they can uh, live out this dream. And Giovanni just said it, that he looks up to you. I'm sure there are a lot of young kids, especially in the city of Detroit, that also look up to the two of you. What does that mean for you guys to, to be those role models moving forward? I mean, it's, always, it's an honor, obviously, uh, to, to have someone look up. Because like, when I was young, I, had, I definitely did not think making, it an H, making the NHL was, was even an option. Obviously, my parents put us in, specifically, they said, to keep us off the street which I thank him for that. And uh, so I, I think that uh, it's, I mean, it's just a thing. You just got to kind of just work and everything always works out. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's really cool, um, especially, uh, you know, warm-ups. You, know, you skate around, we see all the kids, uh, 
down below and it's just like they'll, they're all smiling and like they're just so tiny looking at us and like I used to be that kid happy to see like players that I actually like wanted to be like too growing up so it's nice to see that and all the support on on like you, you see people um a lot of fans like they, they comment on like my my photos and stuff on my social media and they say good things but you know it's uh it's really cool to see and uh i just hope i can uh, keep inspiring young kids uh, th and this is my final question and it goes to jamel we interviewed giovanni on the wow show and i think he was putting me on because yep. you yeah, guys oh, have been working this. out and i think he was missing a tooth and at that point, he claimed that you elbowed him or knocked it out. <laughs> has, has that ever happened? Have you guys, in the course of working out and, you know, you're competitive, you're professional hockey players, have you guys ever legitimately dropped the gloves? I, not this brother stuff. I mean, just dropped them and said, let's get it. Let's, you know, yeah, man on no, man. We have. I was joking about the, uh, my tooth thing. <laughs> but, um, no, we, we definitely, uh, we fought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I can see, I can see that even happening in the near future because we're so, we're both very intense guys, and by no means will I ever let my little brother show me up in training or anything <laughs> like that. So I'm always, I go twice as hard as on him as I do against anyone else. So I'm sure at some point it will happen, but nothing like too serious. Probably just a wrestling tug to the ground, like, but no, I couldn't see us striking each other. So That's who fair. wins? Probably Definitely me. Did. Everyone thinks that. Everyone thinks because he thinks, he's bigger, but, but he knows I'll get deep him. down, like the real truth. He knows. All right. Well, I don't want this to happen at practice, but if it does, we might need some video. You, you can it. tell that Giovanni's like, yeah, I'm just going to yeah. humor my brother here. We, I know I can take him, but sure, Jamel, keep believing it. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for taking the time to join us today. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And thank you all for tuning in to another edition of The Word on Woodward. We'll see you next time.